much. It's really a pleasure to be here uh, at the University of Maryland and see some, some friends and uh, many, many new faces. And I've heard about uh, the work that many of you do, the Finance Fellows, and I'm very admiring of the efforts that you're putting in to bring to our business community. Um, needless to say, we need you. <laughs> um, uh, you know, you're going to leave Smith School with very fine and impressive academic credentials and uh, undoubtedly a strong work ethic and an ability to establish goals and, and reach them. But from where I stand, what we really need is those who have the potential to really have a positive impact on our business community um, and on the world. Um, we are in dire need of good minds and good values together at the same time. <laughs> Not over here and then over here. And the values rubric is over here and the work ethic and, and uh, financial values over here. So I've been really uh, privileged to serve as CEO and chair of the Calvert Group. Um, you heard that my previous experience, and I've been in the investment management business for over 30 years, um, and the first 20 plus of those were with Alliance Capital in New York, and uh, the culture at Alliance was uh, whoever makes the most money wins. And it was work hard, play hard. Uh, people took vacations, but it was about taking the most exotic vacation you could imagine. Sort of rare book, book hunting in Wales was like a really cool <laughs> vacation. Uh, we never had a take your daughters to work day at Alliance. And I, I, when I left Alliance to lead Calvert, I had two daughters who were five and eight. But we didn't do that sort of thing. The, uh, the children did not come into our, to our workplace. Um, so when I was approached to lead Calvert, it was just uh, a remarkable awakening for me about the ability to bring together personal values with, with the, uh, the built, making money and, uh, and doing well for the, for the company I was working with. Um, Calvert is one of the world's uh, leading managers of socially responsible investment funds. I was lucky to take uh, the reins at Calvert from its roots, his, its historic roots. And for those who don't know, and I know there's at least one person in this room that knows because he was working with Calvert funds with his clients, that's Dennis Gertz, wherever he is. He has been associated with Calvert for 30 years, and it's a pleasure that he came to hear and correct me when I say incorrect things about Calvert. Um, uh, but he is a, a stakeholder, a client of Calvert's. And uh, Calvert was the very first mutual fund company that set up a mutual fund in 1982 that would not invest in companies that did business in South Africa. And at that time, you have to imagine how revolutionary that was. Nobody did that. That was the first time. And it was using finance and investment, uh, and for, for actually for good reason, feeling that was not a good business decision to make, but it was also not a good ethical or values decision uh, to invest in those companies. And divestment became a tool that helped, helped bring down apartheid. Um, one of my most uh, meaningful moments at Calvert occurred uh, about 10 years ago, in the year 2000, when uh, Thabo Mbeki, who was the then president of South Africa, was making his first state visit to the US. It was under the Clinton administration. Uh, he had succeeded Nelson Mandela. And I was out volunteering. You will hear that we give one paid day a month to volunteer. And I was literally downtown Washington when Elizabeth Lavaca, my associate who's actually with me here today, called me and said, you're not going to believe this. We got a phone call from the First Lady of South Africa. She's in Washington. She wants to come to Calvert. She wants to see Calvert. She wants to know who, who we are. And so I jumped in the car, and like any good working woman, had my high heels in the car, threw them on, and raced back to the office. And we hosted uh, the First Lady and some of her uh, staff at Calvert. Uh, just interested in knowing what we were doing, what our latest issues were, how things were going. And about 5 o'clock, I, I said, excuse me, but, but don't you have a state dinner tonight? <laughs> you know? And she said, oh, yes, I have that, but this is more important. Um, and that evening, I was able to turn on C-SPAN and show my two daughters that I met. There was the First Lady of South Africa, and she visited Calvert. So we have a wonderful, wonderful heritage um, in, in combining values and investment philosophy. Uh, we do offer more than 50 funds, as you heard. We're a pretty big firm now. Um, and as CEO, um, I believe my, my job is to, uh, allow, is to enable us to simultaneously achieve multiple objectives. 
We don't, we don't say one objective. We're here to make more money than anybody can imagine. We simultaneously want to do three things. One, we want to be a leading mutual fund company, investment performance at or above benchmark uh, averages, sales and revenue growth at or above our industry averages, um, profit growth at or above industry averages. We're a for-profit company. Um, secondly, we want to be a leading firm in, in areas of this intersection of business and society. Uh, st evaluating sustainability issues, corporate social responsibility issues, and bringing them to bear in the um, investment process, because we think that makes good, good ways to select companies to invest in. Um, how do these, these issues of diversity, of environmental stewardship, of governance, of community engagement, how do those intersect with uh, uh, financial returns and with good business practices? Um, so we have a team of about 20 researchers, social researchers. They, come, they might come from the EPA, they might come from business schools, they might come from human rights organizations, and they inform our investment, um, investment work. And our third simultaneous goal is to be an employer of choice in our market, which is Greater Washington. Um, and we, are, we, we, we compete for prizes, uh, best places to work, great places to work. We do win them. We've won some workplace awards from Working Mother Magazine, Washingtonian Magazine. Calvert had won these awards before I got to Calvert, and, and I, was the, I am the first woman, I guess, CEO of Calvert, and not only that, a working mother. And I think one of my biggest fears in joining Calvert was not about investment performance or about sales. It was, oh my gosh, if we don't win this Working Mother's Award, and now we have a working mother as CEO. What is it going to say, and what kind of reaction are we? Gonna... Anyway, we won it anyway when I got there, the year I got there. So well, I'm very uh, I ducked that uh, um, uh, branding dilemma. Um, but I'm really here today to talk to you about the very important topic of managing businesses that foster and reward personal integrity. Um, I, was, I, I noted that uh, the first part of the this, this topic on the uh, flyer, fostering a culture of ethics at the executive level, is very much spot on with what I'm going to talk about. The second part, how the 2009 mortgage banking crisis could have been avoided, might be a little bit of embellishment, because I'm not sure I could exactly tell you that. But we did avoid it. We avoided it as a company. Calvert, uh, in our now $15 billion in assets under management, um, we, we managed nine billion of uh, taxable bonds. We didn't own any subprime mortgages. We didn't own any credit default swaps. We didn't, we didn't invest in Lehman paper. And I'm gonna get to why we didn't, okay? That's, that's to keep your attention for the next 15, 20 minutes. I will tell you how we avoided them. And the answer is not direct. It's not that we knew something no one else knew. But I think a lot about what we do in sustainability and, and, and uh, uh, the kind of research we do is we get at the right answers, but through doors that you wouldn't expect. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting process. Well, I'm, I'm very glad that, that uh, University of Maryland and Smith School of Business does take very seriously the subject of uh, uh, integrity and ethics. And I understand, I hope I have this right, that uh, you recently received a bb and Foundation grant to develop a curriculum around business ethics and leadership, and that's that's excellent. Um, I do think we need all these things brought together, um, and I, I hear a new colloquium on capitalism, ethics, and leadership, and this, these are all very, very uh, important intersections. Um, and those who are able to understand how these areas intersect are going to be the leaders um, and and uh, uh, those who have the most impact um, in the future. Every day in the newspapers, we read about companies that haven't valued integrity um, and have lost customers, reputation, share value, um, and in some cases, continued viability. Uh, most recently, Goldman Sachs. I don't, I don't have to tell you, you might have been glued to, to C-SPAN today with the testimony of the various Goldman Sachs partners and what they're accused of, essentially uh, betting against their customers on, in the mortgage-backed securities area, according to the allegations. Um, working with a hedge fund manager to design a product that would allow that hedge fund manager uh, to short a basket of mortgages and then uh, uh, selling that same basket of mortgages to clients. Um, and at the same time, gosh knows what they were doing in their own proprietary trading, which is the bulk of their earnings. They're essentially a big hedge fund. But, um, and that's, I think, the outcome of this. I'm, I'm always willing to make predictions that can be a, a little cheeky. I, I think Goldman will survive, but they'll survive as a hedge fund. You know, I, I, don't, I can't imagine many institutions relying on Goldman's advice going forward. 
It's, I, I think they would probably ask for a bit more disclosure than Goldman might be willing to give about, about why they're doing what they're doing.